a little bit, don't quite fit it in this morning. We'll squeeze in the final part of it this afternoon. I promise this will give you lunch. Um, can you guys online, you can see the screen. Is that accurate? You can see the presentation. Yes, thank you, Lisa. Okay. Um, we're doing seller appointments first. Okay. So we're just going to jump right in here and then we will see how our time goes and come back to script practice and all of those great things. I'm running two computers, so bear with me. Okay, today we are focusing on uh, lead generating as, as always, but primarily making a seller presentation uh, to get listings. It's one of the most important things that you will do these, these uh, I would say number two, right? I mean, number one is you gotta have people to do these presentations for. So lead generating takes priority over everything else. Uh, however, once you get, once you have people to talk to, uh, this is the next most important thing because if you don't get, don't get this piece, uh, the rest of it doesn't matter because you won't be doing it. Uh, and some of them are easy for people that maybe you've known forever, uh, but there will come a time, hopefully sooner rather than later, that you'll be doing these for people that you don't know super well. And so while every listing appointment will be a little bit different, um, the basics are gonna stay the same. Uh, it's important that you are providing your value um, and that they, that they understand why, why this is worth doing and why this is worth doing with, with you. Okay, what sellers want? So we'll start there. Um, these are kind of weird slides. Uh, sellers, uh, you have to listen to what they're saying uh, and what they want may affect how your conversation goes. So everything's going to be a little bit different. Every seller is a little bit different and it will vary not only by how well you know them, but what they're looking for in an agent. It will be different with every everyone. Uh, before the appointment, uh, you should have already started a conversation. So it will be a continuation of what you've already started. Uh, but we're gonna go through what a good listening presentation should cover and how, um, as well as how to establish yourself as the local market expert, which really is probably the most important part, especially when you're talking to people that you do know uh, just as much because uh, you know, just because it's your buddy, buddy that you knew from high school doesn't necessarily mean that they're ready to trust you with the most important investment that that most people make in their life. So how sellers found their agent. According, according to the NAR, uh, this, is, uh, this, this is the core. So 39% uh, are referred by a friend, neighbor, or relative. 27% uh, use the agent previously, which is a really interesting statistic, uh, which I don't know if we're gonna go through today or not, but so we'll just touch on it. When you are done with this, um, I want you to remember that stat because when people wrap up with their agent, a ridiculously high number of people say that they will use that agent again and would refer them. But when it comes to time to actually buy or sell, the number who actually do is significantly smaller. 27% uh, is small, but most people when they're done say they would use their agent again, like it's between like 80 and 90%. Uh, and so just kind of poke that in the back of your mind when you're talking about lead generating and how important it is to not abandon your clients mm -hmm. once once you're done working with them. Uh, small percentage personal contact by agent. Think uh, your, these are your people you found maybe at your open houses or maybe door, door knocking. Uh, internet website. Uh, oh, you don't visit an open house and that agent has a whole other thing, but personal contact and really to me, they're practically the same. So what sellers want? Ultimately, sellers want you to help them sell their house for the most money possible. Uh, what is most important to that particular seller is going to determine largely what your listening presentation looks like. Uh, do they need a specific time frame? Uh, do they need to help pricing their home or do they have a pretty good idea of what they think they can get for it? Sometimes the people who think they know what they can get for it are the ones who need the most help pricing their home. Uh, do they need help fixing it up and getting it ready to sell? Uh, do they need help finding a buyer? Really, the answer to this question is all yes, no matter what they say. Um, you are going to be doing all of those things. However, knowing what they think they need will dictate a lot of how this first presentation goes. All right, Pro 
process to listing. Catch up on my sheet. We have been told to stay on track. Yep. Don't worry. <laughs> it is important that we that, that we follow the script, follow follow the, uh, the the tool. So I just want to make sure I don't miss anything. Okay. What do you know about the process of converting a lead to a listing? That's a world question. Uh, what tell tell me about any tools that you have used when you have someone who's you have heard through the grapevine or mentioned to you once uh, that may be thinking about selling, tell me what it looks, what to you that it, are the steps that you would take to get to an actual listing presentation. Appointment. Stephanie. I just heard from my sister I, that closed on the rental property mm -hmm. on Monday and she sent me a, an email from another rent, uh, like investment property owner in the same neighborhood who said, who's your agent? I think I want to sell within the next year. So the first step for me was just reaching out and say, hey, my sister says you're interested. Here's what's going on in the market. When can we talk? I know you don't want to sell until next year. What can I do for you? So just okay. reaching out. So that's huge. That first, just contact and developing a relationship. Um, what else? What's, what's something else that you've done to help go from, hey, I think that person's going to sell to getting an appointment? Anybody? Other people, it, for me, it's taking weekly calls. Hey, I know you're still working on such and such. I'm around. Did you hear this? Like, I'm always trying to find information that I can send along as a service and as an excuse to just be in their face again. Sure. Okay, so uh, a couple of things you can do. Number one is absolutely that. It's just getting, building a relationship. And so it's making contact, making a friend. Uh, people will do business ultimately with people they know, like, and trust. And if they don't know you, step one is no. Uh, step two is building a relationship, going through those forward questions, family, occupation, recreation, and dreams. Like, what? How can you? How can you learn more about what they want and where they're going and why are they selling and what do they need? Any of those things. Beyond that. Uh, Another thing, especially if you have someone who is that uh, more of a detail personality or a driver personality, someone who wants very specific results, uh, a lot of people will use a pre-listing questionnaire, uh, and you can just send it over and say, "Hey, let's see if we're let, let, let's see if we're a good fit. Tell me a little bit about what you need." Uh, a pre-listing questionnaire will help determine uh, their motivations, uh, how soon they want to sell, what's their time frame, what if, what if, what needs to happen before they sell, things like that. Um, and then you're just gonna schedule an appointment and say, and sometimes if they're ready to go, this is easy. If, if they know they're selling, no problem. If they don't know, they're, if they're not quite there yet or they're not quite ready yet, your listing presentation might be titled strategy session. Okay. Let, let, let's, let's get together and talk about, you know, let, I'll take a look at your house. I'll tell you what we think. We can talk about timing. We can talk about what maybe needs to be done. There's no rush. There's no whatever. It's, and so but scheduling that appointment um, is huge. So once you're scheduled, uh, you can send a pre-listing packet. And again, this might vary a little bit about by goals and time frame. I'm going over tomorrow for someone whose goal isn't to sell until like the holidays. Uh, and so I'm not bringing them all of my listing stuff. Uh, they're not ready for it yet. Things are going to change. We're going to go over what it would sell for if it would go for this weekend, just so they've got a ballpark, but we're going to make sure we're, we're really clear. And we're just going to go and make a to-do list. So that may vary depending on what your pre-listing questionnaire or your conversations say. Uh, oh, and then you're going to create your listing presentation based on their needs. Uh, you should have... Um, and, and we're going to work on cre creating a basic and there may be, we're going to pull this chunk out or going to add this chunk in based on what they are. Um, and then you're going to go do a home walkthrough and do the actual listing presentation. Okay. Let's. All right. Pre-listing goals. So before your listening appointment, you're going to do a lot more listening than you do talking. That's harder for some of us than others. 
<laughs> Guilty, especially when I get nervous, I tend to blabber on, especially when they're strangers. This is not the try to this is not the time to sell them on you. This is the time to listen to what they want and what they need and what they expect. Uh, and you won't know any of those things if you do more talking than they do. So ask a lot of questions and then shut your mouth and let them answer. Uh, and don't jump down their throat as soon as they stop talking. Most people will expand. If, if you get are getting one word answers, you probably just need to listen a little bit longer. People will generally fill awkward silences. <laughs> and not that you should let it be super awkward, but don't be afraid to just be quiet and let them tell you what they need. Uh, let's see, in Spark, you talked about, so you already talked about identifying A, B, and C sellers, correct? Yeah. Yes, perfect. Um, so who can tell me what it means to be a C seller? Which, what's a C seller's time frame? A long, long time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Eventually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. eventually. Uh, and, and really, uh, and so what is a B seller? What's a B seller? Somebody you should contact like monthly just to check in. More, they, yeah, and more motivated and specific, but still not in yeah, time yeah. soon. Yeah, this says 50 to 6, 15 to 60 days. To me, a B seller is someone who's selling within a specific in a specific time frame within a year. That's my personal definition. I know you're going to sell. I know you're going to sell, sell in the next six to 12 months tops. So like this listening presentation I mentioned earlier, I know for a fact that that person is selling their home in November. That's more than 60 days out, but they've got a new construction building there. It is absolutely happening. And so to me, that's still a B. It's not my, my first priority to get that house ready to go to market, but it's absolutely happening. Um, and then an A seller is someone who is, that, that's the person that you are ready to go. That person is, uh, you're maybe working on for scheduling photographer, staging, uh, all of those things. Um, most people have been thinking about selling their home long before they're an A. And so the sooner you can identify those people and get in front of them and start having those conversations, the sooner that next time someone says, oh, I can help you sell their house, they're going to say, oh, actually, thank you. I'm already working with somebody. <laughs> so even if that person is still 12 to, 12 to 18 months out or more, you want to be, in, if you think know that they're headed that direction, you want to be the person that they're asking their questions to. You want to be that person that they call when they say, um, do you think we should do the A, B, and C to my yard? Or we're thinking about painting because I've I, I painted my kid's room this aqua blue. Do I need to redo that? Or do I need to repaint the aqua blue accent wall in my living room? Those two might have different answers, by the way. <laughs> um, so staying in, staying in touch with those and asking all of those questions um, first, no matter, regardless of where they're at, so that you are their go-to and developing that loyalty. Okay, pre-listing packets. Hold on, I think I got lost on my. Nope, just kidding. Okay. So once you qualify the seller and you've scheduled a listing appointment, you're gonna be sending over a pre-listing packet. Uh, you can find a pre, there will be, there's an example, and it's actually a whole packet in your Ignite stuff, um, but you're going to want to spend some time customizing it. If you don't like it, that's fine. Make your own. You can pull your, pull your pull different pieces that you want. If you've never played around in Canva, it's pretty easy. Mm -hmm. um, there are lots of different places. If you really don't like it, if you want a, a different, couple of different ideas, let me know. I've got, there's a, I know of one that I like in particular, but this is a pretty solid start. Um, but just sort of go through it and if nothing else, consider it your baseline for information that needs covered before you actually go. Uh, it has a couple of different roles. It should state your value. So before you go in, they should already have an idea of why they should hire you. They should, um, it, it will go through anything uh, that you're going to help them achieve their goals, how and why they need you. Sometimes, uh, they need you for things, let me rephrase, 99% of the time, they need you for things they don't know exist yet. 
Yeah. Uh, and if you do your job well, they may get through the transaction and still not know those things exist. Um, but this is your opportunity to, to sort of brush over some of the things that you're going to be covered. Um, Pre-selling. That's a weird word. Uh, so just, they, they, this is this is your opportunity to tell them that all of that you are going to have what they need, your advice, the expertise, um, and it can help keep your actual listing package shorter. Yeah, Corey or not Corey? You're Corey. I'm Corey. Matt showed us his um, listing packet with his new team, and it said a ton without without even you know you didn't only had to look at it to know it was expensive. Like it was thick, it was really good paper, it was beautifully designed, but it also had information on how they could work the um, the internet for you, how they could do all sorts of digital things to Fantastic. help you sell the house. I mean, it just had everything pre-listed. And if I got that in the mail, I would say, wow, this is clearly the company I want to go with because they can do all of these things for me and they have you know, really high quality. Sure. So, yeah. So I think when you, when you're building your listing presentation, think about if you were going to sell your home, think about the things that you would want to know, not as an agent, but as a client. So what are some of the biggest questions that typically come up? Let's just throw a few out there. I will start with the easy one. How much will my house sell for? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's not shouldn't necessarily the exact answer be in your pre-listing packet, but address that you're going to talk about it. Right. What else? What what are what are some other things? What do I want? have to do? What do I have to fix to sell? What do we, yes, absolutely. That's one of the biggest things people want to know in this for, for initial consultation is how much do I have to do in order for it to sell? How long will what it else? take? How long it'll take? I've been asked, how will you sell this property? How will you market my property? What are you gonna do? Absolutely. How quickly? How, how long? How fast can you make this happen? What what are what should my expectations be? Mm -hmm. Yep. Also, can can we stay in the house? We don't have any place to move to. <laughs> can we stay in it after it's sold? And no. It, one of your questions on your questionnaire should be, where are you going, mm -hmm. and when can you go there? Yeah. Right. I mean, are you talking to a seller who needs a post occupancy agreement? Are you talking to a seller who has it all figured out and needs it sold yesterday? Mm -hmm. Will the house be empty? Do you need to stage it? Sure. What are showings gonna? What, what do I have to leave during showings? Mm -hmm. Answer that is yes. By the way, mm -hmm. category oh, yes. and category you yes. Have a dog with you. If you have someone who doesn't want to leave during showings, you need to have a real serious mm -hmm. conversation about whether you take that client. That would be creepy. I like someone. I've had. I've had, had, I've had some turn around. around to my really? I'm not going to see it. Yeah. Oh, um. I had when I was first newly licensed. One of the first houses I showed. Um, we got there and the owner was home. I was literally trying to open the lockbox and had not opened the door, was opening the lockbox. And first the wife opens the door and she says, I don't understand why people think they can just walk in. I'm going, maybe because I have a code the lockbox. And then the husband uh, took us on a very detailed tour of the house. It was so awkward. I think COVID fixed uh, you. Do not let your clients do that. He <laughs> had just killed a lot of that. <sighs> anyway, okay. Uh, objections. What What are some of the primary objections that you can anticipate coming up on a regular basis, regardless that you might at least want to start covering in a pre listing com conversation? Price, 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 price. Sure. Um, right, Finn does want to. Absolutely. They don't want to change anything why, about why their house. I pay you X and so and so will do it for Y. Corey, can you hear me? Corey, can you hear me? Okay. I guess not. This was right on and now it's varying. My version and your version are different. Okay, that's right. Um, all right. Because we're running a little late, I'm not going to send you to the pre-listing packet right this minute, but we'll come back to it to, to, to at the end if we've got a few extra minutes. Okay, so we've already talked a little bit about this, but reasons that a pre-listing packet might be important. Um, I think Stephanie hit on one of the biggest ones. It makes a really good first impression that you're a professional and you've got your stuff together. Uh, and keep in mind when you're sending those over, they need to look nice. 
If you're going to send over a, a pre-listing packet, uh, it's their first impression of you. Uh, and it might be their first impression of you, period, or it might be their first impression of you professionally. And if it's, if especially sometimes it's even more important when you've known someone forever and ever and ever that you're going to really put a professional hat on and professional foot forward so that you're not just Joe Schmoe from down the street who was super goofy as a kid. Uh, you're Joe Schmoe who's a real estate agent and knows what they're doing and knows their market and knows their stuff. Okay, so. Okay. Oh, um, volume for people online is off on their, on your end. Sharon has been answering your questions, but nobody's hearing her. Sharon's been talking. So oh, the TV, Sharon, the you're volume. Sharon, you're and uh, and Alexa. Yeah, I see can, you're can talking you and me? you're unmuted. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Um, is it the thank volume? you for telling me. Is it the TV volume? Might be. It's up. It's up to like the fifty-one. So it might be the volume. Let's see. Um, obviously, this isn't even my computer. I'm going to tell them how much they've missed and how fascinating it's been. Well, I think they can hear me. We just can't oh, hear her. Is that okay. right? Yeah. Yes. 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 Oh, oh, oh there you are, Sharon. Yay! I'm glad you told me. I thought no one wanted to talk to me in computer land. <laughs> Thank you. I've been yelling my answers. <laughs> I didn't mean to ignore you. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. All right. So the actual listing presentation. Ooh, it doesn't have open tread, so I wouldn't be fearful of my life every time I'm um, You know what? I saw one very similar to this. Uh, not too long ago, except it was silver. I don't think that one would fly in through inspection though, because I don't know. Small children. I don't know it. if that would make it through an FHA loan or not. <laughs> Things your brain starts thinking about after a while. All right, the purpose of listing presentation is obviously to get a seller to list with you. Uh, you're gonna do that by with three things. Create a great first impression. Uh, you're gonna share your price recommendation. And you're going to set expectations of how the sale, sale is going to go. Those really, all of the other things will fall into one of those three categories. They need to like you. They need to like, they need to believe you when we're talking about price. Uh, and you need to set reasonable expectations. Uh, don't make promises you cannot keep. It will bite you in the butt. Uh, and uh, I, have won, I have won listing presentations by being the most honest. And so if you were going up against someone who tells them that they're going to be able to sell their home for the moon, it's okay. you, you, you need to be reasonable with them and say, look, I wish I could tell you that. And I'm going to do everything I can to get you the absolute top dollar. But I am telling you that the market says this. Uh, and most people will appreciate your honesty. Uh, and most people can see through someone just talking out their you know what, to, to, get, to get a listing. So uh, you need to be professional enough to tell them the truth, even when it's not necessarily exactly what they want to hear. Yeah. The, um, my sister and her husband sold a rental property, and you would think this would be like business, right? They're both former bankers. It, the price was so emotional for them. And it was such a hot topic. And I came in with comparables, three that were almost exactly the same, age, style, size, neighborhood, three that were different but could still be considered. And they looked at those comparables, they like, we just want to know everything that's on sale right now and what the average price per square foot is. Like they didn't want to think about apples to apples. They wanted, they had a, a whole different idea in mind. Um, and then I looked, I researched that and even then they wanted to come in well over market. And uh, I did exactly what you said, which is basically, this is your property, you get to set the price, but these are my recommendations. So it's just so interesting to me that the emotion is there, even when it's not a property. That it, it is. And I, I will tell you, I typically start the pricing conversation with something like this. 
I know that this is your home. And, and there's there's a couple of things that you can do that, especially if you know someone is going to be super, super emotional about it. You might think about having this pricing conversation, even if it's not in there are different trains of thought and there's not even one right answer. Um, you're going to have to talk about price in this presentation. However, you might not make the final determination in this presentation. Mm -hmm. And there's a few reasons why you might do that. And I'll tell you 90% of the time, I do not make a price decision in, in, in this presentation. For one, most of the time, the first time you're meeting in this presentation, it, it's not time to make that choice yet, right? Uh, it, it, even if they're two weeks out with a to-do list, you're not quite there yet. Mm -hmm. uh, number two is you gotta find out, you need to know your people. So have you, has your seller been there for a, you know two years, it's a move up home, or we had to buy something and now we're, I'm, I'm having a kid and I can't wait to get to my next home, or are you talking to the couple that raised their family there and has been there for 40 years? If you're talking to that family who's been there for 40 years and is now ready to downsize because our kids have moved, all moved out, I, I will tell you, that there's a couple pieces of advice I'll share with you. And the first one is don't decide price in your first conversation and do everything you can to do it elsewhere. Uh, you, we have this beautiful office with some really beautiful meeting rooms or even a coffee shop. If you can, for, for step one is to get them out of that house uh, because when they're sitting in it, it is their home. And then you can preface it by saying, gosh, what a beautiful home you have. I know that you've loved it. I know that it has served you well. And I want you to do your very best right now to take your home hat off and put your asset hat on. When we're talking, going through this process, we're not talking about your home. We're talking about one of the, your biggest financial assets and how we're going to get it there. And especially, so when you start talking about pricing and you start talking about, hey, I know that you really love that, that neon green wall that you painted and it's your favorite color because it reminds you of, I don't know what neon green reminds people of, but, <laughs> uh, but you need to get, if you get them out of the house, mm -hmm. then they want that, then it's a little bit easier for them to have those conversations. Um, and you're going to preface it by, by reminding them that we're now talking about their, their house as an asset, not their house as a home. So you're not necessarily setting price at the meeting, you're setting a price range. I would, I, throwing yeah, numbers out. Yeah, I would start with a price range at this, unless you're talking about someone who's in a huge hurry and you're talking mm -hmm. about listing next week. Yeah. Um, you're going to, I always start with a price range and there's a few reasons why. Yes. I'm going to 100% come in having done my homework. Uh, and I will get there, but I'm going to come in with a CMA and some comparables. Uh, however, I don't know what your house is going to sell for until I've actually stood there. Mm -hmm. And even, I mean, I will tell you, even my best friend's house, I've not been in her kid's bedroom. I don't know what that basement bathroom looks like. I don't know what kind of, I don't know how old your roof is. I don't know what your HVAC system is. And so even if this is a friend and you know them, uh, standing, what, you don't know what the house is going to be until you've done a full walkthrough and it's virtually ready to go to market. Yeah. You have to put the price on the contracts that you sign with them as well. You do. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and so, um, but I will say I don't do contracts in a listing presentation either. No. I'm going to prep them for contracts. No. Uh, but let's assume that for the most part, your listing presentation is your first, this is your first, this is your audition, right? Um, and, and so you, and it's going to depend, again, a, a lot on a lot of things, what's time range in particular. Um, and there's no right or wrong answer. I absolutely know agents who always bring contracts. Mm -hmm. and, they're ready, and, and they're ready to sell. Um, and if I think it's someone might be a little bit more wishy-washy or we're in a tight time frame, I will absolutely have them ready to go so we can go through them if we need to, but, um, okay. Make sure I didn't say anything before I move on. I have a question. Shoot. So, you're saying you wouldn't have them sign a contract at the listing presentation? Um, aren't you worried that, that, I would, would, that you might I lose say, them? I wouldn't say I wouldn't, 
I'm saying I don't usually. And that's not necessarily a wrong answer to that. Um, it's just not, it's mostly not my style. Um, I will usually have them ready to go. So I will have them prepped and ready to go. If time allows, we will go through them and if they're ready, they'll sign them. Uh, if, they're, if we spend an hour going through listing presentations, I'm probably not gonna stick, try to shove a whole bunch of contracts down their throat right at that moment. Um, it will be quickly. It'll usually be, if I don't get to them that day, what I'll usually say is, I'm gonna email you over a set of contracts. Let's set up a time in the next day or two so that we can go over them via Zoom. I like going on, actually one of my favorite parts of Zoom world now is the ability to go, <laughs> it's contracts. I love going through contracts on Zoom because I can control exactly where they're looking. I can point out very specific things. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I appreciate that part of it, but. Plus they might be really auditioning two or three listing agents. They might not have made mm -hmm. a choice for you yet. So. Yeah. Um, and, and so it's, it's gonna depend on who, and there again, there's no wrong answer. I absolutely know that most, there are agents out there who go in with their contracts and their expectation is to leave with them signed. And I don't, I absolutely not going to belittle that at all. That's not my personal style. Uh, however, there, there's some benefits to that. So um, no, there's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's just not my, I don't usually, not that I won't and not that I think you shouldn't, just that I don't usually. Okay. We are going to go jig through designs now. Oh, yeah. Have you guys spent any time in here? A little, yeah. a little bit. Okay. Uh, we're not going to spend a lot of time in here because I will tell you that the best way to learn designs is to go in there for yourself and play with it. But just for argument's sake, and so I can tell Margaret that I did. She's a taskmaster, that Margaret. She is. Let's see here. Ah, sex face. I'm not where it should be. Um, I don't know. I know how I type it enough. Yeah, mine, I take the letter C and pop stuff. <laughs> Your hair is very high today. <laughs> it's yesterday's hair. That's what it's all like. <laughs> No, thank you. We don't need to remember my password. This is not my computer. Move your, you online people. Uh, design. Should have asked you if you wanted some water. Thank you. Just oh, I'm okay. Thank you, though. There's also sodas in that. Well, all the leftovers from all we've had a lot of parties the last couple of weeks. <laughs> like we should keep this refrigerator stocked. Yes. All right. Listing. Okay, so this is where all of our stuff is. This is where you'll find all the things. Everyone followed how I got here? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So as you can see, there are multiples. We are not going to spend a lot of time in here because you can do this on your own. But let's just pull one up just for a minute. And you're, come on. In. Awesome. That one didn't have a use button for some reason. Um, and you can think about, so there are different ways of bringing this. 
Uh, in this digital age, you might want to print them out so you can leave them, or you might want to have it on your computer and not, and leave a highlight packet. Uh, it's really up to you what works best for you. But as you can see, there are instructions that you can read through. I said we're not going to spend very much time here. Uh, I do love this page because um, when you specify it to one specific person, it makes them feel important, uh, significantly more so than someone's generic listing presentation. Uh, if you leave someone with a packet that is 20 pages long, I'm gonna say eight out of 10 people will not read it. If you leave a packet that is three pages long, I would say eight out of 10 will read it. So think about um, how much you want to read, how much you want to leave with them. Even if you're going to go through this whole thing, I would encourage you to have a shorter version that hits the highlights um, and maybe have a note page where you're going to make a list of things of their, especially if you're making a to-do list. Uh, you might think about, uh, you know, having a blank page that they can, um, that they can go through. So this has a nice little, so you may, and this might, you might not have a lot on here. If you're going in fairly blind, you know, you at the very least, when you go to an address, you should at least have pulled it up on Realist and know how square footage, you should know what public records say. Um, I will usually print out a public records page and bring it with me and just say, this is what public records say about your home. Uh, does this look correct to you? Uh, if they didn't permit their basement when they finished it, it might be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you pull? Do you pull an, a title? Uh, an E and O. Yeah. Yes, I will also pull an E. Pull an E and O. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say I make it part of my listing presentation, but I will tell you it is important. Uh, I had a client not that long ago who had an extra. It was a very complicated loan that they had, they had gotten some uh, assistance on, uh, and they had been put into a program of an interest-free uh, government-funded uh, loan to shrink down their mortgage payment at, at, at one point a few years ago, uh, and they had another $30 lien about on their house that they had no idea they had. Yeah. Uh, and so while they still sold, it was a it was a big deal for them to find that out and make sure that we were shopping for the right thing and we knew exactly how much money was coming out of it. Uh, if there are liens, they most of the time you'll print it out and they'll be like, "Yep." Hopefully, you're going to see the mortgage that they're aware of. And that's it. Um, but if you pull an E and an O and E and it's ten pages long, you need to read it carefully. And if there are things you don't recognize, grab Margaret, grab someone in the office to go through so you can help them because there's a there's a fair chance that they may not even know it's there. Tell me what to think of this. I pulled an O and E for a home that I've been contacted several times by the man who says he owns it, but it's not his name on the title. I'd ask him. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes I, um, I pull, you know, sometimes they have, uh, I, I met, I, I had a Mike and he was, uh, his parents, he was, he was American, born and raised here, but his parents were from somewhere in Europe and he had a very strange name and I had no idea. I pulled it, I'm like, I don't even know who this person is, but he basically had stopped going by that completely. Mm -hmm. Um, so you just never know. Uh, this neighborhood sheet can be helpful, but make sure you check your information. Uh, commands neighborhood nurtures are super cool when they're correct. <laughs> um, but you can go into RE Colorado and do kind of a make your own snapshot. Sometimes I will tell you one of the neighborhoods in my farm pulls nothing, it's blank. You can still use this, even if that information doesn't populate from command. You're just gonna have to do a little bit of the legwork yourself to pull it out of RE Colorado, you can still get those stats. Um, that's a little bit different class, but it can be done and it's worth doing. Uh, comparable properties. One, make sure, I will tell you, when I go through a listing presentation, especially when it is time to talk about real price, um, we're going to start with these so we have a general ballpark. Uh, but before we determine an actual, actual price, I'm going to pull those comps on the computer. We're going to look through the pictures together and we're going to say, and at the end of it, I'm going to say, this house is very similar to yours. 
uh, in size and in whatever. Would you say that it is nicer than, not quite as nice, or about the same as yours? And sometimes when you have those real emotional people, when they're faced with those actual pictures and what things actually sold for and the competition that they're actually going against, that can help bring them back down to reality. Okay. Um, okay. Just so I'm clear, um, the o &E, you'd be pulling it for your listing yes. appointment? It's only $5. $5 <laughs> so yeah. I would say yes. Um, and there's a couple, number one, it gives you a lot of credibility. Like the fact that you're, sometimes people need reminded that we have, we have easier access to public records than your average person. Public records are public records. Most of what we get, they could get if they're, but it's, we can get it very easily. And most people have no idea how to do that. Um, so number one, it gives a little bit of credibility that you're on top of things that you know what you're doing. It's only $5. Even if they don't list with you, write it off as an expense, like on your taxes. It's just not a big deal. It takes less than a day to get. Um, and you just, and sometimes you need to know those things. I mean, if you're looking at someone who bought, uh, okay, you're not going to see this very often right this minute, but if you see someone who bought, find out that they bought, um, nine months ago, with an FHA down payment assistant loan, uh, and now they're getting divorced and they have to sell, you may have a problem because they have no equity in that house. And you need to discuss what that's going to look like. Um, it, so do you absolutely have to? No. Do I for every single one? Yeah, I do. Um, it, it is, it's important things to know. People need to know it, it's a very part, important part of the equity conversation. Um, and as the person who's going to be taking their payment out of that equity 99.9% .9 of the time, um, you need to go in sort of with a, at least an idea of what that is. Um, and if there's anything, you know, sometimes if you find that you may find something that they have no idea about, and they'll be really grateful to find it. Um, sometimes they need to, fix something um and you know in the end you never know so thank you for clarifying that yep okay does anyone have any questions about building this we're going to come back to some of this maybe but for now okay all right i stopped there there is a there should be a your needs page. Uh, why do you think this might be an important page to have in your business or have in your presentation? Well, in addition to knowing what they want, it can help you set ex expectations, reasonable expectations. Yep. At the end of the day, uh, this is a relationship. And so finding out what they want and what they need is the most important thing that will come out of this. Uh, you need to spend a little bit of time finding out their personality type. Do they need to know that this is going to be pure torture and you're going to take care of all the detail work so they don't have to worry about it? Are they a numbers bottom line person who just needs to know what they net? Make sure that they know the difference between what they sell their house for and what they're going to net in their pocket. Um, and that, you yeah, know, that, that number probably isn't going to be in this listing presentation, but you need to know if that number is important. So the next step that you're going to do is go home and draw up some, some imaginary net sheets. If you net this for your, if you get this for your house, you can expect to net this. If you net this for your house, you can expect to get this. Um, so asking Most them likely what you can actually get that from your title company. So you can actually do that right through like land title. Yep. You can pull that up. You can do their schedule number and they will do it. So then you're not liable for making up numbers that may not really work. So then you go, no, this came from the title company and they will give you an exact breakdown that you can send, I, which is I, very I easy. You, I, I shied away from doing this when I first got started because I was so afraid of getting this number, that net number wrong. Um, 
And so I will tell you a couple of things to do to, to avoid that. Number one, she's absolutely right. Uh, all of the title companies have net sheet worksheets. Number two, uh, you should A, pull an O and E, and then B, ask them. You can do the math. An O and E will, have you, has, has anyone not pulled an O and E before? I'm guessing several. Okay, so first off, it's easy. But second, it, it will show you the liens that were put against the home. So it will tell you what their mortgage was pulled, uh, their interest rate. And so by doing that, you can probably do some rough math to figure out what, they're, what they owe on their home and your home. Um, there are calculators for it if you, if you, if you want to pull it up. However, I pull an O&E, but you should also just straight up ask them, what's the outstanding mortgage on your home? And when you're, what, because that's an important number when they're pulling up, when you're doing a net sheet. Uh, and you will find half the people know and half the people have absolutely no idea. They just make their mortgage payment. They don't, they don't look at it monthly. And they're gonna, you're gonna say, would you, would you next time you get a statement or, or would you dig out your last statement and just find that number for me. And then that will help your numbers be accurate. Um, and then just, you know, make sure that you explain that there's a handful of things that can vary this. Uh, if you have an HOA, make sure you've accounted for several hundred dollars in HOA transfer fees. There may or may not, you know, it may be little, it may be nothing. Uh, status letters, status letters are, are what the title company pulls for, um, to say, you know, make sure that everything is caught up in the way it's supposed to be on the HOA. Uh, there's a charge for that almost always. Uh, condos in particular, they get kind of expensive. And so make sure you're counting for some of those things. Uh, but the, 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 um, the title companies will help walk you through that. And then I always just tell them, when I see these numbers, I always assume that it is a couple thousand dollars high. high. And that way, it's not going to be more than that off. They're, they're quite good. Um, but you don't want them banking on that number, so just tell them. Uh, but when they want to know, that, that will help give them a, a, a ballpark. Does that answer your question? I can't remember where we started on that one. <laughs> <laughs> so O and E, ask them what they owe. All right. Um, OK. So when you're asking them what do they need, which is where we started, what do you need? What do you need numbers? You need a certain amount of, uh, of money from your, from your house. If you do, why? Sometimes people think they need a certain number or they want a certain number. And I want to know why they want that certain number. Is that a number that they pulled out of the sky? If this number is a magic number that they pulled out of the sky, I want to know how motivated they are, right? I always told myself that if I could net this, then I would sell. Mm. That person is not a particularly motivated seller, and that's okay, but you need to know that going in because you're going to handle things differently. I need $78,000. Why? <laughs> Why do you, are, are, are we needing to do something elsewhere? Is there a life crisis that we need to know about? Is there a time frame we need to know about? Is that what you think you need? I, I need $100,000. Well, I want to, why? Well, I want to buy a $500,000 house and I want 20% down. That's a perfectly valid reason to want $100,000. Um, and so is that, can we do that? What's the viable? And what happens if we don't? Can you still buy a $500,000 house? Of course you can. If you end up putting $45,000, the mortgage insurance on that is a pretty negligible cost for a very brief period of time. Like this, these are solvable problems. And... By the way, there's also closing costs on, on when, you, when you go when you buy your next home. So asking all of these questions, uh, what do you need, and then you want to follow up with why is this why is this important? I need to sell this fast. Why? Well, I'm already under contract in Georgia on blah 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 blah, and I have to sell this before we close. Fabulous. We're going to we're, we're gonna make sure we address that for you. We're going to need to pray, make sure we price aggressively so we are positive that that happens. Okay. So what's pricing aggressively? Uh, low. <laughs> if, I, if I absolutely positively have to sell, even in this market. Um, and here's, that's a different conversation. I don't want to start that. Yeah. If I, but if I have someone who really needs to sell fast, we do not want to be overpricing the house. 
and shooting and shooting for the moon, the market will drive it up to will drive it up. Yeah. Even in March and April at the height of the market, it was the houses that were 10,000 under that were just getting all the- 100%. So, yeah, I keep hearing like nuts. buyers, buyers know the market. They're gonna, they're going to drive up something that they want mm -hmm. badly enough, but are not sure. willing to, you know, go into a bidding war for something that they know is over. Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, and, and just on a side note, I, I, I started telling my sellers, especially right now, Buyers will compete against each other all day long, and they will go up to beat the other buyer. The second they think the seller's just being greedy, mm -hmm. they're out. It is just a psychological um, me versus them, and when they get to, to, to that feeling of he's just being greedy, as opposed to that person is willing to pay that, and if I want it, I have to, I have to beat it. It's a very different psychological mindset. Uh -oh. Sorry. This is Corey. Hi. Oh, fantastic. You call me so fast. I thought something was wrong. <laughs> okay. Perfect. No. <laughs> Good luck, puppy. Okay. Hey, I'm actually teaching a class. Can we go over it when I pick him up? <laughs> Thank you. Give him an extra treat. All right, fantastic. I'll see you more. Bye bye. Too drug to feed that. Sorry, that was really fast neuter. <laughs> I thought my puppy was like dying or something. Okay, Aww. he's all he's, he's fine. Okay. He is. He's he's what? all good. <laughs> okay. For now. <laughs> scared me. That was fast. Um. Okay. And then we're going to go through, we'll go back to this. So we're going to go through a listing pre presentation that we've presented, uh, that we've created, and then we're going to do a home walkthrough. Uh, hmm, trying to decide which order I want to do this. We're going to, do, we're going to come back to objections. Is that okay with everyone? Um, okay, so you might do this at the, at the beginning, you might do this at the end, there's really no wrong answer. A lot of times this is people's expectation and so you're going to walk in the door and they're going to take you on a tour of their house. That's cool. If you want to tell them, oh, hold on, let's talk a little bit first and then we'll take a tour, whatever, there's no wrong answer. But at some point you're going to go on a tour of these people's homes. <laughs> so um, don't be shy about it. Open the closets, unless they tell you not to. Like, you, you need to look, you need to know. Um, so when you're going through, you're just going to just pretend, just, just be neutral, right? Um, when you're going through, you, you don't want to hyperinflate things that are false. Right. Don't go tell them their 70s basement is stunning. <laughs> um, Unless you really like wood paneling, which I do. Which maybe you do. I mean, you can you can make personal taste comments, but just let them go through. Um, I will always, I will tell you, uh, bring a notebook and make notes as you go through um, about the layout. You will forget. If it's your first one, maybe you won't forget. You will forget. You will go down to make that list, put all of the information into the MLS, and you will say, was that a three-quarter bath? Mm -hmm. Or was there a bathtub? Was there was what was in the basement? Was there a bedroom down there? I don't was there was there a conforming? Was it a conforming bedroom? Did it have a full window? I don't remember. So so take a pad and paper and take notes. And as you're going through, um, if it's appropriate and they've uh, you're going to sort of start making and you're probably going to go through again right so let this one be short let them go at their own pace if they're asking questions about what you can do you might also start another list about things that need to be done make a list for you make a list for them uh everyone's a little bit different are you you know are you someone who may be hiring a stager 
Are you just going to give them basic advice? Are you going to stage the home? That's all going to be, you know, those are all questions. Uh, but for the most part, the most important thing is on this first walkthrough is you're taking really good notes on, um, on, on the house. Uh, so, and, you know, just kind of maybe ask them if, you know, hey, can we put my stuff down on the, on the kitchen table, chit chat with them, listen to their stories, build relationships, uh, and take good notes. Um, let's see. And this is after they've signed the contract with you then? You're going to do a walkthrough? Oh, or would you do that? I will do a would you do a walkthrough before? All right. So mm -hmm. <laughs> the contract. you got to know your people a little bit. Uh, I will walk through a house with anybody without, without a listing conversation, con without a listing contract. Mm -hmm. I will tell you, though, you do want to be a little bit more careful with how much advice you're giving prior to having, um, prior to having a contract. Uh, it is not fair to, you, you should not be giving away your expertise for free in this listening conversation because there's nothing more infuriating than finding out that someone spent two hours with you, did everything that you suggested, and then finding out that they decided to go FISBO or list with somebody else and took all of your advice. And so, you're, yes, walk through the house. Yes, uh, talk about some basics. Um, but don't go through and stage their house for them without a listing contract. It, you will sooner or later you'll end up burned. Now, if this is your mother yeah. <laughs> and you you may not have your or your best friend or you know you know those people that you already have that you know you have that business. It's all about just finalizing it. That's a different conversation. But if this is a referral or someone that you know you're auditioning with, and it, it's okay to say you know I I I know that what you do for a living provides value. So does mine, and most people will not expect it. Uh, and, you know, sometimes I'll say, you know, as soon as we have listings, a, a listing agreement signed, I will X. Um, for me, there's a lot of staging. I do a lot of staging for my listings and I don't stage until I have a listing agreement signed, period. Uh, and if I've got someone hemming and hawing about get or procrastinating getting it signed, uh, and that point is different for everyone, but uh, it, it is okay to, you know, yes, you're walking through, but this is more of a general conversation. But when you start doing very specific price, when you start doing very specific staging, um, don't give don't give your your expertise away for free. You worked hard for it. So, um, so there there will probably be another one. Let's see. This. Th this guide says to do the, to ask if you can walk through alone. There's value there. You can kind of, and the answer can be, um, you know, uh, because you can kind of make it, you're, you're making determinations on price and without their narration. I will tell you, I don't do that because to me, relationships, this is a relationship business and all of these things contribute to that. Um, but don't feel like you have to let them just be tour guide party. If they don't go open that bedroom door, go open that bedroom door. You need to see the whole thing. If they don't open the closet, if, if, you know, it looks like there's, what is that, that back there? Go, go look. People are going to be doing this in their house. Um, be confident. Don't be shy. Um, and, you know, you can, you can make, I'll you make your own determination of whether or not you do that. I let people take me on a tour of their house. Um, you, you will learn things. So, okay, all right, now we're gonna go back to objections. Okay, let's go to, there is a uh, script book on page 11 to 13. You guys have all that, yes? I think it's in the packet, or maybe is it this one? The pre-listing script? Pre-list eight? No. Eight. Eight. Or maybe there, it's in that. Other it's other. a script book. It's like a whole separate. Oh, yeah. Yep, yeah, there it is. Oh, so what page again? Sorry, 11? 11 to 13. We don't necessarily go through all of them, but let's talk through a few of them. So I am, I will, I, I will preface this with this because I think it's important. Um, I hate scripts. Hate, hate, hate them. 
Um, here's what I love. Having the answer to people's questions. <laughs> <laughs> so if you could take, it took me a long time to get here and Margaret will tell you, uh, if you can get to the idea that these are not verbatim words that you have to use, uh, but you will take them and make them your own and take them from scripts and turn them into more of guided conversations. These scripts are your friends. They are helpful. Saying stupid things will help you figure out how to say things that make sense for you, that match your personality, that sound not scripted, okay? Um, and so I always put that in there just a little bit because I really, really struggled this, with this for longer than I should have. Um, so let's just go, um, go through a couple of, of, of these. Um, objections. And so I'm going to throw out a couple and you guys tell me how you would answer. Uh, and then if we need to add to it, we will. We need a certain amount from the sale. We already kind of already covered this one. We need a certain amount from this sale to buy our next home. Why do you need that specific amount? Yeah. So a couple of things here. Number one is sometimes they don't. Sometimes they think they know what they need and they don't. Uh, but more importantly, what you need to buy your next home does not dictate what this house is worth. Mm -hmm. And so you know, maybe ask them to flip. So if you are a buyer, are, is your concern paying what the house is worth and getting the, getting the best price for your money? Or is your concern what you, what you need? So just remind them that that is an important number to know, uh, but it doesn't dictate the, the price of their home. Um, here's a common one. Can we price a little higher and come down later? What would you say? I would say we could. However, if we do that, we could be the longer you stay on the market. If we don't get offers at that price, the longer you stay on the market, the less like people are going to look at it. Sure. There's a perception. There's also a perception of like something could be wrong right. mm -hmm. with the home if we start high and start to come down. Um, so ideally, if we're looking to have you get the most out of your home, then we would want to price it appropriate and let it be fit up naturally. Also, people, the people in the Denver area have been trained to think that it is abnormal for a house not to sell in the first three days. And so if it hasn't sold in the first weekend, they start immediately wondering what's wrong with it your best chance to get the most people through is the first time it's on the market. And after that, you have to do a dramatic price drop to get the same level of activity. Um, will, so if you're going to, if you have a price to someone who really wants to stick at that high number, make sure that you're having a conversation of how do we know when it's time to drop the price? The market will tell you very quickly in this market. Uh, that sometimes we, sometimes it takes a month to know. Right now, if you don't have activity your first two, two weekends, we have something, our, our price is wrong. We, we missed the mark. Um, you can write it in, this isn't a contract class, but you can write it into your contract that you will, after X amount of days, if this happens, the price will automatically drop to this, and then you don't have to have that conversation again. Um, I will tell people if we're getting showings and no offers, we are at least we're five percent overpriced, uh, and if we're getting no showings at all, we're we're at least ten percent overpriced. And so you want people to start thinking in terms of percentages, not terms of five and ten thousand dollars. If you have a three hundred thousand dollar contract uh, condo, it might be enough to drop at ten thousand dollars. But if you have a $650,000 home, which is still a fairly conservative home in our area right now, $10,000 price drop is meaningless. A price drop is to get more people in the door. All right. Um, so just having, a, but, but yes, absolutely. It's, it's, it's getting people through the door the first few weeks is the best time to price it right is the best strategy. Um, Skip that one. Where are you talking? Okay, staging objections. Oh, this is fun. I have strong feelings about this. Why do I have to stage my home when everything's selling so fast anyway? Uh, you want you, a division of living 
Yeah, maybe I have as much of a clean slate for people to be able to envision themselves and their their decor and their their living style in the home. What are the stats? It's like if you do staging, it can increase your prices by my I can't remember. Do, do I believe that your Denver home in this current market, or especially if it was a few months ago, do I believe that your home will sell without you staging it? Well, absolutely. Of course you, I do. Yeah. You wanna you wanna highlight features of the home as well, and that's what staging is. Do I believe that the difference between one person being able to see through the clutter and three people being able to, to envision themselves living there? How much of a price difference does that make in your pocket if you have three people who can see through it? Now, you might not want to call someone's home stuff clutter. You should be a little gentler than that. The but, 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 the, but, but the people's ability to visualize is far more limited than we, would, than, than we think it is. And it matters. Mm -hmm. And if it's the difference between one person falling in love with your home and three people falling in love with your home, those competing offers make can make thousands and thousands or tens of thousands of dollars difference of what ends up in your pocket. It is worth the time. Do we really need to make this repair? <laughs> and here's the thing. The answer is it depends on what it is. If it's something that's likely to come up in an inspection as a health and safety, yes. If it's something that makes a first impression, yes. Do you need to re your bathroom? Mm, probably not. Maybe. It depends on how bad, how bad it looks. It doesn't really look bad. Really and gross? Yep. And yes. <laughs> Can you have a conversation about uh, when I walk in and see the chipping paint or the bad paint job, I did an open house on this, on this not too terribly long ago. They had done a DIY paint. Um, and I actually had an off the street open house attendee say, makes you wonder what else they've done on their own. Okay. Does the paint impact the house? No. But when they see crummy DIY paint lines or crummy... You know, not, there's nothing wrong with good DIY, but if it looks DIY, they, people start wondering what else they've done. And so the answer is, is, yeah, is anything that you can do that will either for sure come up in inspection or make people wonder what else you've done, has been done or, had, or what else has been neglected. Those are, those are big things. Um, can't we sell the house as is? Well, Yes, of course you can. And for some people, that's the most important thing. However, it will cost, usually cost less to do those things than people think. Um, let's talk, I will say I'm personally guilty of this. Uh, we sold our house last summer and I will tell you, I can name three things. Uh, re, uh, not painting, staining, restaining my deck, having the trees trimmed uh, and um, fixing a flooring issue. Three things that we did to sell the house that we had just glossed over. And I will tell you, when I found out how much they actually cost me to do, I was kicking myself for, for living with those things for two years. I did the same thing in the house. People don't, people tend a lot of times, uh, now not always, but a lot of times people overestimate it. So you might say, let's at least get a quote so, we will, so we'll know what it would cost on some of those things. Uh, let's at least get your furnace serviced so we know what we're looking at because that's going to get, let's at, let's at least, um, you know, let's get a quote and see how much it would cost to paint this room if you don't have time to do it, if you're not going to do it or you don't have time to do it or you do it poorly. Uh, you need new carpet. Let's at least get a quote for what it would cost to replace the carpet. Have you ever had to um, pay for a pre-inspection and then just had that as part of the documents online when you're selling house? I have not. I know some people do, and it would depend a lot. If I really, if I really wanted a fast close, mm -hmm. I'd probably push for it. I will tell you though, my opinion is that pre-inspections are asking for trouble. Uh, you're asking, you know, you're finding out things that you have to disclose. You have to do this. Maybe those people are going to find it anyway, and then you'll deal with it. Yeah. But the, you know, if if my furnace needs replaced, it's going to come up in inspection. I'm going to have to pay for it to be done. Did right. I gain anything by paying for a pre-inspection and doing it beforehand? 
Yeah. yeah well, well, now I get to say, I'm thinking we're, I'm actually working on a deal right now on getting a bid together for a house that has a 25 year old roof, has just come back from contract because the HVAC system needs to be completely replaced. And it's just a rental property. It's not like guys living in it. Yeah. So, no, I, I mean, I, I would say. Don't borrow trouble, okay. but you got to know your people too, right? I mean, yeah. some, some people are all about that. You just need to discuss the pros and cons, but if something's found in that inspection, you're going to have to disclose it. Yeah. Most things that are found in those inspections are going to be found out anyway. Right. Um, however, you may not ever know about it. They may decide they can live with it and it's no big deal or they're willing to fix it for that price or they're, they don't want, especially in this market. Um, but so if you've got a 25 year old roof, I'd have someone look at it. If you're going to have to get a new roof, you might as well go and get it started. Yeah. Because that can be a little bit time consuming. Um, I know a lot of people have furnaces serviced yeah. to, to, so that they know, but a, a full house inspection is not something I would typically, I would do unless I had someone who was really nervous. Okay. Those are not objections. Okay. How are we doing on time? 1026. We're doing awesome. Okay. Whoops. That's a contract. I really like the character. Your script that you do for your open houses. Or for your uh, door knocking. Oh. <laughs> I got it. I got part of it from Matt. But yeah, yeah. We'll talk about it later. Okay. So, all right. Make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay. So we've already talked a little bit about the pros and cons first of having a contract. Uh, pros, you're going to be done. So you, you've now gone through all of this stuff. And the goal of this is to get a listing. Um, if your list is not going to be listed for a while, you need to make sure that you make a note in there that it, uh, in the listing agreement that it will be brought to market. Uh, so property is being prepared for market and will be listed at the seller's discretion. Um, so otherwise, you're expected to put it up pretty much right away, um, which is a silly thing but because you're just going to go in almost everything. But um, at the end of the day, you're, you need to ask for business. And it's the most awkward part of this sometimes. Uh, bold, bold will tell you is, you know, do you have any other questions before you're ready to list with me today? Uh, that is too aggressive for my personality, just being real with you. Um, but I, I, well, I will follow up with a question such as, is there any questions or concerns that you have for me before you're ready to, so before you're ready to go over contracts? Um, and typically that will be enough for them. If, if, if they have any hesitations, they're going to start coming up. It might be, we're going to interview ABC. Is there anything that you're hoping that they say that I, that I've not covered? Um, is there anything, uh, they, what concerns do you have? And this is, you know, I will tell you, I do not cover uh, my uh, charges unless they ask me directly at this point. And some people will sign a contract without bothering to ask. I will not let them sign a contract without <laughs> covering it. I want them to know, right? If I don't go over in the listing presentation, I'll go over it when we go through the contracts and I'm going to point it out and walk them through it. Uh, most people, a lot of people will not even ask, but a lot of people now, and it's becoming more and more common that they will ask. So be prepared to, tell, to talk to them about it. So uh, let's have some objection conversations about that because it's likely to come up mm -hmm. at this point. So what do you do with somebody who says, well, you're going to do this, 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 and this, and this person is going to do this, do the same thing, but they're going to do it for less money. Mm -hmm. How do you handle that? I've actually been in that situation and I was stuck. Oh, you were stuck? Okay. Um, we would acknowledge, you would acknowledge, you know, the statement, first of all, like not want to come off as defensive or aggressive, mm -hmm. right? I understand it sounds like, you know, that, that commission piece or that those savings are important to you. Mm -hmm. Um, and then maybe ask some more questions about what 
they're hoping to get out of that sure. and then turn around and show the value of uh, the things that you will be doing okay. that could be costly by going with a discount broker. So I'll tell you, I, I, one of the things I will never forget, my very, my first time I went through Ignite just like this, the gentleman who taught Ignite, whose name I cannot even remember, he happened to be the compliance officer at that office at the time. He pulled out $3 to address this. One, two, three. He says, in any given commission, I know it seems like a lot of money, but I want to explain to you that one third of this is going, a third is going to go to Uncle Sam, a third is going to go to a brokerage, and a third is going to, and the, what is left over will cover both marketing and feed, feed your family. And so what you're telling me, I don't think Uncle Sam is going to give up his portion. And I don't think the brokerage is going to give up their portion. Mm -hmm. So if faced with it, so what's left is what feeds, feeds my family and goes to marketing. And if something is going to give, where do you think those dollars are going to come from? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so be ready, be ready to have that conversation. And I will tell you, if you're telling them that you're going to spend money on marketing, <laughs> You want to be spending some money on marketing. Right. Not that you need to spend tons and tons and tons, but you know, make sure you're hearing. We're going to be doing this. We're going to be doing that. And, and you don't need to. You should. You should have already given your value proposition. Uh, you should have a list of of services that you provide. Um, and what do you do? But uh, and step number two. If I can't even negotiate for my own commissions, you really want me negotiating on behalf of your house, right? right? So that's another really important piece. Um, and sometimes it makes sense, right? So, so uh, if you've got really a numbers person and you're going in and you know that that's gonna be a real numbers person, you might think about, Margaret has a couple of great options if you ask her to send them to you. I've used it once um, uh, and varying commission, sliding commission scales. This is what I will do for this. This is what I will do for this. And this is what I do for this. Um, I have charged more than 6% and create and really provided concierge service. We did full stage. Uh, I helped uh, direct contractors in and out of their home. It was an older lady who's moving into assisted living and uh, it was an old lady house. So it needed some, it needed some stuff. It needed some yard work. It needed paint. It needed, we didn't do a full gut, but we, it needed some love. And so, um, you know, consider value. Uh, if you really have that, that person who's really stuck on that, you can talk about, you know, consider a menu. A menu can be really helpful. As people start, when they start actually looking at what they're going to lose, mm -hmm. they go, oh, that's probably worth, I mean, staging, mm -hmm. well, that could cost me two, conservatively 2% 2 of my purchase price. Is that worth giving up half a percent? Hmm. Mm -hmm. No. And what is that that's called? You said Margaret kind of sent out to you. Uh, it's a variable commission. She's got. She actually has, I think, three versions of it. Variable so, commission. yeah, I probably could send it to you too. I have it, but she made it. So, uh, and so if, if you're really struggling with pricing or that's a really scary conversation for you, it might be something I wouldn't pull it out at every listing conversation, li listing presentation. But if 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 you're really nervous about it. Um, it can be some. It can be a really useful tool for people who are really picky, um, and really highlight all highlight your worth. Uh, I also have a conversation about. Uh, you should also need to make sure you have a conversation about when you're having this this about buyers commission. Um, I I professionally will not offer less than two point five, and I strongly prefer two point eight. And I tell anyone who wants to list at 2.5, so you need to be aware that there is a possibility that someone's going to come in and they have agreed to X and you need to be prepared to pay for that because if they're going to offer, so let's say we, we're going at 5% and that buyer broker demands 2.8 because they have filled out their listing paperwork accordingly and our buyers paperwork accordingly and have the ability to ask for that. Uh, you were, it's not coming out of my pocket. It's going to be, coming, it's going to be an extra expense for you. And I just want you to be aware that it could happen. Usually at 2.5, it doesn't, but professionally, I know how hard buyers brokers are working right now. Um, a lot of people are listing at two and a half. 
I, it's a, a pet peeve of mine right now. Everybody, it's, sure. it's, it's dropping. And what bothers me the most is that the lower the price point, the more likely you are to see two and a half percent, which is just infuriating. But you're um, also doing more work, and it's way more work. Yeah, cash. and if somebody's so a seller, as far as a listing agent asking for more, is that why? Are they asking buyers brokers? So when I list my, when I make my buyers um, agreement. Have you been through the buyer's contracts class and you know that you should check the box that says buyer is obligated to pay. Mm -hmm. um, and everyone has their own personal things. And I tell my, my buyers when we go through this, I say, here's the deal. Here's why we check this box. If we go to a FISBO or every now and then I've, I've even seen 2% and I will not take, I will not accept 2%. If you, if you present me with 2%, somebody's paying me extra. Um, for most people at two and a half percent, I'm going to take it and keep my mouth shut. Anything lower than that. Hi, Sue. So I just wanted to show you. I'm good. Place. How are you? Thanks. I won't even show yep. the place. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, okay. So here's the thing. You can't. You cannot not show it. But you no, can have. The buyer's agent. Yep. If you're if you're the buyer's agent and there is someone who's offering two percent, you have to show that property if they want it shown. If they want to see it, and you can have a conversation as long as you check the box. By the way. This is only offering this amount. We can try to negotiate for my, the rest of my commission, but you need to be prepared to pay the difference if not. Yeah. And a lot of times we'll be like, oh, then no, don't worry about it. it works. Um, and when you're having your listing presentation, yes. I just wanted to get a hug. This was my, this was my very first question. I'm so I happy you. she's here. Oh, <laughs> we'll tell you next Good to see you. Me too. Come see I, I, I you know you're a good hunter. We're almost done. Hi, Stephanie. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Meet you. Like me the other night. I know, but I saw you. Yeah. I saw, I knew yeah. you were hugging people. I knew yeah. you were. <laughs> Hi there. Hi, Sue. We ran a new contract. Oh, great. Yeah, great. Last night. That's good. Finally. Isn't that odd? We were on the market for three days and I said, finally. <laughs> <laughs> we were just oh discussing gosh. that. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's good. It was beautiful. Sal helped me with the open house the other day. Oh, oh fabulous. Most traffic I've ever seen in Oakland. Isn't that fun? It was fun. It was a good time. I love yeah. it. If I, if I had been in town, I, I, I would have I would have gone just to catch up with her. I was not here. Yeah, it looks like you had fun. Ah, uh, that's one word for it. <laughs> Oh, uh, I just saw the one for your, your little guy, little guy. Yeah, not so little anymore, huh? Oh, yeah, that was, that was not <laughs> Anyway, okay. Um, are there any other objections or questions or things you really want to make sure that we cover? It is 1038. So we've got a few more minutes, but we haven't done. My sister time. was really anxious about timing. Like, why isn't the sign in the yard right now? I want it sold right now. I want it closed tomorrow. I want it just like, oh, this was her emotional thing. Sure. And I had to work really hard to say, mm, well, there's a bullet hole in the front panel of your, in, in your playhouse oh. window. And while some people would just say, oh, it's a BB hole, other people might say, what's up in this neighborhood? And so your idea of just putting a little note saying we're fixing the window, maybe not a good idea so when's the window guy coming and you know so yeah. it was a lot of just trying to to kind of pull back and just say we could but maybe this would be a better idea yeah well and that goes back to we're in a hurry why are we in a hurry yeah our goal is to get the most money for what happens if if you were if you if you're going into let's see the next holiday now is labor day it's labor day weekend a historically awesome weekend to list a house no, probably not. No, <laughs> <have to. laughs> is it a terrible weekend? Is there is there a scenario in which that you should do that? Totally. Uh, I listed one on Mother's Day, and the conversation went like this: We're ready. You're ready. Let's do it. Um, and I want you to know, sometimes Mother's Day we see this, and if we do see this, I want you not to panic. Uh, we're not going to be doing any price reductions for at least two weekends because of the holiday. We're, well, this is the thing. We ended up selling that weekend for well over list price anyway. Uh, but it was a lot slower. And I w wanted to make sure that, the, I mean, I think we had six showings. And on a, one that a few weeks ago, we would have expected 60. Um, mm -hmm. But we still got a price well, uh, an offer well above and beyond what they, what they had hoped for. So 
um, you know, just having those timing conversations and why. And mm-hmm. the answer to can we hurry is sure. To a point. But yeah. And I always tell people, um, especially people who are rushing to the market, what do I need? So if I'm staging personally, I need once you've done your to-do list, and let's assume it's occupied and we're not like hauling furniture in because that's a little bit different conversation. I need a day to come in where I can have several uninterrupted hours uh, or a couple of uninterrupted hours to do some some staging. I'm, I may switch out some of your artwork. I may uh, move, you know, move some of your furniture around. I made this and we're going to talk about all those things, but I need a day to do that. And then the, I need a day for pictures. I need 24 hours. And in a perfect world, uh, we're going to list it as a coming soon for a couple of days and then we're going to go to market or do all these things. Does it always work out that way? No, but I need, they need to know what's, what time do I need after they're ready. So just because you're ready Friday morning doesn't mean I can get on the market Friday afternoon because mm-hmm. I haven't had to talk a friend. So, yeah. so have those. I was just looking. My, my sister from going on the market to closing was 19 business days. That's pretty amazing. And when we closed, I said, are you happy? She said, oh, I do wish we could have done it a little faster. A little faster and from 19 days. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's pretty darn fast. I and don't know how. And you, you may, and if you have someone who's worried about timing, it's it's worth it's worth saying an average close period of time from under contract to close is thirty days. If you're in a hurry, can we find someone who close faster? Probably, maybe depends on what it is. Um, if it's a condo or an investment type property, your odds are better. But pushing it close, if, if you're trying to push faster than three weeks, you're probably looking at, if there's at a cash loan, deal. If there's a loan involved. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. So it is what it is. What else? Any other listing objections or concerns or nerves? You you have a whole day on CMAs, I believe. So we're not going to. 